According to Gary Chapman's 1992 book, The Five Love Languages, there are five different ways that humans give and receive love. Words of affirmation, physical touch, quality time, acts of service, and gifts. But there's a secret sixth way of giving and receiving love, and it just so happens to be my personal love language. Pre-Ceramic Omega Watches. I don't know what it is about this era of Omega, but everything about these watches just speak to me. I recently reviewed my personal favorite Omega Seamaster Professional, the 225450, a pre-ceramic neo-vintage legend that has all the makings of a future classic. And that's what we have in today as well. The Omega Seamaster Planet Ocean from the mid 2000s is another watch I think is a future classic and everyone is sleeping on it. This is a top contender for the best go anywhere, do anything watch category. And I think this really could be the perfect dive watch. If you're new here, my name is Brittany, AKA Watch Gringa. And this channel is hopefully just putting a little bit of joy back into the world of watches and watch collecting. If you've watched more than three watch reviews, you've probably gathered the watch world is a bit pretentious and stuffy. And I just wanted this channel to be an explosion of joy around these weird little trinkets that I'm absolutely fascinated by. Today we have in the Omega Seamaster Planet Ocean, which I'm borrowing from a fantastic friend of the channel, Ben, from Wristworthy UK. If you're not an illiterate dum dum brain like me and you like reading about watches and not just watching YouTube videos, you need to go check out Wristworthy UK. He's such a fantastic writer and I love his approach and style. Um, of, of writing about watches. And he's let me spend some real time with this watch. I've had this watch for a couple weeks now to give it like a proper, more well-rounded review. So thank you so much, Ben, for letting me borrow this watch. But with all this out of the way, let's get to the real star of the show, the Planet Ocean. So the Seamaster Planet Ocean was released in 2005 as a modern interpretation of the Seamaster Professional. Now, if you're sat there thinking, but this looks nothing like the Seamaster Professional, that is because it's a modern interpretation of the vintage Seamasters. So the Seamaster as we know her today is quite the reimagining from how these watches looked in the 1950s and 60s. But if we look at the vintage Seamasters, we can see those design elements this watch is nodding to. The broad arrow hands, similar numbers, and the matte dial. So this one Ben has loaned me is one of the early Planet Ocean models. Looking at the specs, it has a 42 millimeter diameter, 48 millimeters lug to lug, and it's 14 millimeters thick. So it's a bit of a chunky boy. It has a little bit of wrist presence, but we'll come back to that later. It has anti-reflective coating on both sides and 600 meters water resistance, which is a ridiculous number. This watch has a quality that I find really hard to explain. Just the build quality is superb. When it first arrived and I picked it up, I remember thinking, this just feels incredibly well-made, which is probably what you should think every time you pick up a luxury watch. <laughs> but it's a quality I find really hard to describe. It just feels really solid in hand and indestructible. Solid bezel, no play at all, very satisfying sound. Why is this like porn to watch geeks? Why do we get off on this? Looking at this watch, it's just so inoffensive. So the matte black, very industrial look to it, hidden away date at the three o'clock, and a really healthy dose of loom. My husband James doesn't like the broad arrow hands. I completely disagree. I think they look so different and aggressive. The only real point of contention, as always with an Omega dive watch, is the helium escape valve at the 10 o'clock. That thick, juicy wart. I kind of hate myself for being so won over to the helium escape valve. Like three months ago, I would have said, ugh, Omega, like get a grip. It's so ugly. <laughs> but I've been actually kind of charmed over to it. Since having a couple of pieces in for review with the helium escape valve, it's a design feature that I've come to appreciate, particularly on models where they keep it quite small, unlike the modern Seamasters. Ugh, yeah, it's too much. If I had to nitpick as well, the double-sided anti-reflective coating has always made me sad because it scratches so easily. It's a non-issue for the watch itself. It doesn't really affect anything. It's just purely aesthetic. 
Um, but that would be a nitpick I have. Taking a look behind the hippocampus, or what I have affectionately deemed the portrait of my mother-in-law. Inside this watch is the Omega Caliber 2500 based on the ETA 2892-A2 with the coaxial escapement. So the Caliber 2500 movement wasn't built to house the coaxial escapement initially, so Omega had to rework each one that came into the factory so it would have the space. Later generations of the Planet Ocean would feature the Caliber 8500. So at the beginning of this video, I said this watch might just be the perfect dive watch. And I truly think it's a line that doesn't get the love it deserves. I know when we think Omega dive watch, we instantly think of the Seamaster 300. Thanks a lot, James Bond. But quick tangent, James Bond does wear this one in Skyfall, doesn't he? But I would argue the Planet Ocean is an all round better and more handsome proposition. Looking at the specs and the water resistance alone, it's clear that it's a better dive watch, better in air quotes. But design wise, this is a much more wearable everyday kind of watch, particularly if you have an average to large size wrist. So this is the watch on my five and a half inch wrist versus my husband's six and a half inch wrist. It's not really suitable for me. I think my wrist is too small to pull it off. But when I see it on James's wrist, I'm filled with envy and just wish it looked like that on my wrist. Another feature that I rarely say about an Omega watch is um, I love the bracelet. So it is brushed all over with the polished sides and the dive extension. I've said it once and I'll say it again. The bracelet is an extremely important part to the wearing experience and it's so often overlooked by the brands who go for the bang for buck in the specifications. We love a coaxial escapement, we love the spring drive movement, but how does it sit on my wrist? How does it look? How does the bracelet tie into the watch aesthetics overall? And this is one of those rare times when I love an Omega bracelet. And this watch also comes with a rubber strap option that kind of looks like leather. It's cool. I love it. I think they knocked it out of the park with this one. And it really reflects in how much I enjoy wearing the Planet Ocean. On the wrist, it feels very tool, kind of chunky and industrial, but it's also something you could dress up as well. Elevated tool? Is that a category? It should be. And it just feels like a watch everyone's sleeping on. If you want one of the early editions, the 2005, I found them online for about 3000 pound. I bet you could even get a cheeky discount on that. It's a watch that offers a lot of enjoyment for a really reasonable price. And it's just cool. It's just a cool watch. I would love to see more of these out and about. Anyways, I'm just rambling now. <laughs> I've just really enjoyed wearing this watch for the past couple weeks. But as always, I'd love to pass the question off to you guys. What do you think to the Seamaster Planet Ocean? Do you love it? Do you hate it? Do you have one? I don't know. Let us know everything in those comments down below. And do all those magical things to feed the algorithm gods. Give this video a like, comment, and subscribe to me if you're not subscribed already. Come on. And until next time, you beautiful, fabulous, wonderful watch nerds. Bye. Nailed it.